Good morning, guys. Just thought I would share like a couple of interesting things that I've built over the past few days. They were basically going to be used for managing large scale um, content creation, which is what I was expecting to take place inside our villa. Unfortunately, it didn't quite go to plan. Um, but nonetheless, like I built out these tools, which I still think are very interesting and very useful. But now I can see like a lot of other use cases for them. Um, so I'm just going to jump straight into them. This is a Airtable database that is designed to be able to manage hundreds or even like thousands of um, social media accounts. This one is actually built for for TikTok. Um, however, it could very easily be translated across to Instagram, even to like some form of like Reddit tracking uh, or, or several other platforms. But yeah, just to walk you through how it works. So the first field, uh, the first table is like a high level overview. Um, so in here we have three models, but again, this, I just built this to be like super scalable to give like a high level overview. So you could easily plug in hundreds or potentially even like thousands of, of models. Up here, we have a high level overview. How many posts were done today? Uh, it's 11.44, so the girls don't stop working for another 16 minutes. Um, but posts yesterday, we have 34 posts yesterday from this model, 45 from this model. But again, I just want to be able to see very, very quickly, uh, like why did this model not hit her like target criteria? Next field, post from the last seven days. And here we have 1934. And you could easily build this out to go back much further. The kind of the data and the logic is already there. Um, so you could do like a 28 day um, backlog, like a 60 day um, look up as well. Uh, and here we have the total number of accounts that they're managing. So here we have six and, and here we have five. And again, just to add in a new model into this system and for them to be tracked, you would literally just create a new row, type in the name of the model and add in the TikTok accounts that, that she's working. We come down into the next field. This is kind of more in detail and we're looking at an account by account basis. So the first field was looking at an overview of every account the model works on. And this is giving the specifics of each individual account. Um, so first off, we have like the usernames and then we have the profile pictures. The reason that I put the profiles in is actually very um, specific. I want to be able to see every single profile picture of every single account that our model is working on. Uh, our team in Georgia will make uh, TikTok accounts in a lot of cases and there may be a case where they just don't use a good profile picture and I do think that profile pictures are kind of like a um, underestimated piece of the puzzle on OnlyFans. By having a great profile picture on there that, in, that maybe sparks a guy's interest and gets him to click through onto that profile, if you can really optimize the click-through rate of when someone finds your profile compared to where they click through on, onto your profile and they either turn into a follower or a subscriber, profile pictures are like a great way to do that. If you can have a girl who looks like how to put it, a little bit hot from a distance and it kind of gets them to, to want to click through. Uh, it just sparks it, sparks the guy's interest to want to click through onto the profile to uh, see like a, a full view of her. Um, that means you're doing really, really well. So like you're just going to see like tremendously better results compared to a normal profile picture or even a profile picture where everything's fully visible. I have found the ones that work the best are profile pictures that kind of spark a little bit of interest. Uh, like this one here is like a, a great, great example, actually. Then we have the bios. So this database, sorry, I should say, it's updated every single hour. You could run more frequently than that. However, I think it would just be a little bit too much overkill. I think one running every single hour gives a really clean evolution of every single account. You can really see the progression of each account um, and you're not going to be wasting like a ton of, of API credits. So this checks the bio every single hour and we also make sure that the Instagram is entered in there correctly. Of course, we don't wanna be sending people over to the wrong Instagram with even something as small as like a spelling mistake. Stupid as it sounds, we have had issues like that before. So again, I just built an automated system to verify that the correct Instagram is added on there and to make sure that there is actually an Instagram added on there. Um, and here we have an overview of the TikTok accounts and how many posts they did each day. So today, again, all accounts are on zero. But yesterday, we have 11, 10, 11, 10. And then this account only had three. So I can very easily build like an automation to trigger something to send over to the account manager. Uh, why did this account uh, not reach the, the target criteria? 
Uh, and again, we have for another model here. So you can see this model is actually a lot more active and posting a lot more content uh, there than this one. Here we check if, if we've put a link in there. Um, generally, I don't really use links. Like uh, we find that it just increases shadow bands and just a little tip for you as well. We're testing around currently not even logging into the Instagram account, simply just having it connected in the bio to check if that has an increase on, on reach. We come over here you can see the total number of followers of each account and as well you can see an overview of yesterday followers so here we can see this account yesterday had 123 followers and it's now on 651 uh this account was on 1062 is it now it's on 1078 so we're we're seeing progression sorry that wasn't a good example this one is on 145 this one is 779 today um so almost 600 followers grown in a day just nice to have like a visual, a really easy and clear overview. If you're managing thousands of accounts, there's kind of no other way to do it. There's no way that you're going to retain the information in your head. Uh, then we have a total number of views. So this is quite simply a sum where we add together the total amount of views of all of the TikToks that this account has ever created. And again, this is updated every single hour. And we can also do a comparison of yesterday views. So yesterday, this account only had a total of 459 views, and now it has 24,715. Looking back further through the data, there's a seven day views, 14 day views, 28 day views, and as well a backlog of seven day followers, 14 day followers and 28 day followers. You could do 60 days, 90 days, 180 days. I only built out this database yesterday, which is why all those fields are empty. So I'm not too worried about um, about looking back six months because quite simply, we, we ha have, haven't got the data. Here, this is total posts. This is scraped off of the account itself. This is how many posts TikTok says that account has. And this is how many posts that we have linked in our database. So here we have the correct number of account and here we do as well. Here, TikTok is saying that there are 12 posts, but we only have nine in our database. So maybe the model has recently done three posts, or maybe our scraper failed on the, the last time it ran uh, one of the two. So I will, I will have to, to check in into that. And then if we go down into the next level of the database, sorry, I should mention as well, this is a relational database, which means that every single table, um, each of these tables models is able to communicate and pull data in and send data to TikTok accounts and, and vice versa. Uh, and the same TikToks, like each table that you see here funnels data up uh, to create like a, a higher level database. So TikToks contains like all of the raw information, all the raw data. Um, and then that funnels up into TikTok accounts, which gives us like a cleaner overview of the total activity that was taking place today, which then funnels up into models. So we go deeper and deeper into the database and each time more and more raw data is kind of just dumped on us and each table um, sorts through that. As well, if you see the color scheme here, right now these accounts are red because they have no posts. It's really simple, but kind of nice, like nice to work with features. Uh, when a TikTok has no accounts, it'll be red. When it has two accounts, it'll be orange. When it has five accounts, it will be yellow. When it has eight plus, sorry, when it has that many posts, it, it, it will automatically change into those colors. Airtable also offers built-in automation, or you could build it through their API or through Integromat, where you could go and build uh, an automation, uh, which is what we have done. So I actually get a message on my phone, uh, an iOS notification through the Integromat app. If a model hasn't posted any content, um, I get like a, a warning that goes through at 1.30. So if for the first hour and a half of a day, nothing has gone up, it tells me that the model isn't working. And that will also get triggered through to the account manager as well to kind of let them know to ping the model to, to see, see what's going on. This is like completely automated. And I built this out as a way to be able to manage thousands of accounts in an automated way. So the other thing that I've been working on, I won't share that today, I'll save that for another video, but we've been working on a tool for identifying, I, I wouldn't call them trending sounds, but I would call them like up and coming sounds, I guess would be the right word, like the sounds that we expect to go viral based on parameters that, that we're tracking. And so it's kind of, it's like, it's a work in progress that there's, put it that way. Um, and the reason that we do that is because you want to, you don't want to be posting on a trending sound when every other influencer and creator is already on there. You want to be 
ahead of the curve. So of course it means that we don't always get it right, but if we're able to guess in 50 or 60% of cases that this is a sound that is starting to pick up traction and we're able to get in there early, um, it, it really un unlocks the, the, the opportunities for what is possible with, um, with TikTok and it means that you're seeing much less competition. So we're building out that tool, which then goes in each every day, sends a list of the TikToks that each creator needs to create. Um, and then again, we can track here automatically, has that actually been done? And we can track all the analytics and results onto a, from a specific account level up to like an overview of the, um, how many TikToks the creator has made and the results that, that we're seeing. Then if we come across into the lowest level of the database, this is like a raw dump of the TikTok data. So these are actual TikToks. This is the number of views that they had. This is the created time according to TikTok. This is how many comments they have, how many shares they have, the metadata. TikTok actually gives you like a ton of data, like with this like scraping API. However, I actually chose not to take most of it. I think you can kind of overwhelm yourself with information. Um, whereas these are kind of the core metrics and core data points that, that I'm interested in. Um, and so, yeah, and then the only other thing is that we have like a checkbox here. We download every single TikTok that is created um, without a watermark, and then we store it in a Google Drive. And again, that's completely automated, and I'll show you how, how that runs as well. Um, the reason that we do that is because we do TikTok reposting, uh, which is going incredibly well. Uh, we actually had I, I thought it was quite funny anyway. We had a funny case the other day where a client ordered our reposting service and one of his slave accounts actually ended up having more followers than, than his main account. His main account had about 7,000 followers and we were reposting uh, and doing like metadata adjustments and uh, onto the content that we were reposting. And one of the slave accounts ended up having more followers than his mother account, uh, which uh, anyway, I, I thought was pretty funny. Um, so we, we do reposting on TikTok and then we also do reposting onto Instagram reels, which I'll go through in a second as well. And then the final table is just a follower snapshot. So this is taken every single day at 11.59 and it gives me an overview of each account. It shows me how many posts it has, how many followers it has and the total number of views and who, the, and this links into the model and tells me the name of the TikTok account. And again, I only built this yesterday, which is why there's only one record for each account, but this will continually update and every single day we're adding more and more data, uh, which allows us to build out more kind of complicated dashboards and graphs, which I will walk you through in, um, in a moment as well. So now to go into like the actual automation, uh, I guess people will be interested to see this. So I'll just kind of walk you, walk you through step by step. Uh, first off we grab from the, um, first Airtable database. And if this is a new model that we've added in, we will go and generate a Google Drive folder for her, for us to, and this is, again, it's done automatically. This creates a Google Drive um, for us to be able to go and upload content automatically. When I mentioned we download the non-watermark content, this will just go and get the Google Drive and, um, for us to dump content into. So that only happens the first time that we create a model, it only needs to be done once. Every time after that, we scrape the followers of the account and we check the bio of the account, we get the link, all the information that you saw in the second table, and then we update Airtable. Next up, we scrape the feed, we grab all of the videos, this returns us, I think, up to 30 clips, and then we iterate through each of those. Um, iterate just means to process each of those results one at a time. First off, we check for duplicates. As I mentioned, the database updates every single hour. So if it's a TikTok that we scraped already previously, we will check for a duplicate. And if we register a duplicate, we will go down this path and we will update the record with the current statistics of views, shares, comments, likes, uh, and, and everything else. Um, if we haven't found that TikTok before, if it's a newly posted TikTok and it's been uploaded in the past hour, we just go and create a record. We then download the HD video. Uh, we update in Airtable the field, as I mentioned, that says the TikTok uh, HD um, no watermark has been done. We put a little checkbox in there. Download the actual file. We download the actual data of that video file, and then we go ahead and upload it to Google Drive. The format that I use to upload into Google Drive uh, is we put the view count at the start of the, uh, of the file name so that it can easily be um, so that our team can prioritize 
the highest performing content on TikTok, they can prioritize reposting that on TikTok and also reposting that onto Instagram Reels. Again, very, very simple. So we just sort by um, highest to lowest. So the, uh, the TikToks with the highest views are going to appear at the top. As soon as our team have reposted it onto their uh, onto our TikTok accounts and onto our Instagram Reel accounts, uh, it's just dragged in to post it on Reels so that they, they know not to keep keep reusing it. Of course, we can go back in there in, fu in future and always use it whenever we want, but it just keeps this uh, table quite clean. And this is essentially a queue of um, TikToks that, that need, need to be reposted. So that is the, the automation. Again, it runs every single hour. Um, yeah, nothing else really to add there. So now I can walk you through some of the more interesting parts of what you can do with this data. I think some people weren't actually aware, but Airtable actually has an interfaces um, feature where you can build out dashboards based on the data that you have within Airtable. Um, it's not a, like enterprise grade solution. Like if you were looking for something more complex or if you host your data in actual uh, databases such as Mongo or Postgres, um, maybe you want to look at using a tool like Retool, which I am also a fan of, but it's a lot more, it's going to be more work to kind of set everything up. This kind of gives us a lightweight overview of everything that is taking place within our Airtable database. So on the side here, I can navigate through into each of our models. Again, these are generated automatically, so we can literally process thousands of, of models uh, without any, any issues. Um, post today, post yesterday, post last seven days, post last 14 days, total accounts added, number of TikToks created daily. So this is based on the date. So from um, the 11th of December, she posted three videos on the 12th, 32 videos on the 13th, 21, again this will update every day so yesterday she did 34 records she has a total of six tiktok accounts linked to her and this gives me an overview of the followers of each of the accounts and the total number of followers within her own network of accounts so i can see that most of her followers are made up by these two 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 main accounts um, and again, this will update every day. So every day it will add in a new bar. I only made this uh, yesterday, which is why there's only one record in here, but this will continue to add on and you can kind of see the evolution uh, of all of the accounts and how, how it changes over time. So I think this is really, really interesting data to have. And then finally, views generated per day. Um, Self-explanatory, I think no, nothing nothing really for me to add. So yeah, um, the, these are all new accounts. 7,000 views generated one day, 37,000 uh, yesterday and today. So far we've had 26,800 with no posts being made yet. So um, yeah, I think this is all like just, again, just to give you like a high level overview of everything that's going on with your accounts. I think this is just super interesting data. Uh, and as I continue to collect more data, there's not much information in our database at the moment. As it continues to build out, I think this data will become more and more useful and there will be more and more um, kind of use cases that I can, um, and things that I can build on top of uh, in, order, in order to make more interesting dashboards essentially. One other, tool I, I would actually make a full video on this another time but like because we're here i'm just going to show you like another way that i um that i actually use this so i'm going to show you this is this is a browser that i've switched over to it's called arc arc i've actually deleted google chrome entirely um i won't go into too much detail about it but uh, like i've moved over to this it allows you to have like separate workspaces so you can separate out all of your models and have different proxies on each different workspace so when you're managing a lot of different girls this becomes very very useful um but one feature that i'm just going to show you now this is a feature within arc called like an easel and it's kind of like a little workspace so i can drag images i can drag text i can make some notes i can do whatever um but the most interesting thing at least in my opinion is if i come in into the dashboard if i just come in and take a screenshot it's not really a screenshot though this is a embed i can embed whatever i want on here and i can have it as a screenshot or if i press the play button this will update in real time. And so you can drag in like multiple, let's say that I want to, like this isn't just limited to, um, this isn't just limited to uh, OnlyFans, by the way, like you could use this for anything. I use this for tracking my crypto investments. I can just copy the prices of hundreds of coins and build out these uh, really simple like workspaces. I can have high level overviews of all of the models that I want. Uh, I could inject like Stripe, 
revenue, for example, YouTube analytics, um, my Slack messages, I can embed here. And again, it updates in real time, which I think this is such an interesting piece of software. Again, I'll make a video on it in future, but um, I've been using it quite a lot and uh, not quite a lot. I've literally moved over uh, entirely from Google Chrome as like my browser over onto Arc. So um, yeah, I'm uh, a pretty, pretty big fan. So yeah, that is everything for me. Um, these are, to be honest, some of my favorite things to, to build out is really what I enjoy like doing the most um, in my job is like having ideas, building out like automations and systems and processes to um, to kind of make make my work e easier uh, and, and to automate things. Uh, so yeah, um, I've also been doing a lot of like process documentation, talking of automating things like you can, of course, automate through software and also through um, through humans, through, through manpower uh, or, or woman power. Um, and I've, I'll share a couple of other tools. I'll make another video on this, but I've been like kind of documenting everything to make a completely automated onboarding process so that we can have a new Columbia model who wants to join our agency and start in who, who would have started in the content house again slight pivot on, on the strategy there um but i built out an entire process where a model applies to join they are onboarded completely they are assigned accounts they're given their responsibilities of what to do uh, the only fans is registered banking information is added correctly um through to they are creating tiktoks and Reddit content and everything else that we need, creating the OnlyFans content, um, bringing in subscribers to us in a fully automated process. Idea, well, theoretically with no input from my side, we'll see if it actually pans out. Um, but yeah, that has been like a, a focus, and um, we've been we've been taking on like multiple models um, per day, and now I've built this on like I'm feeling built built this out. I feel much more confident in our ability to manage. Uh, manage a, a lot lot more models um sorry one other thing i forgot to mention as well is on this it's really easy to kind of build out so i actually get an alert um i was trying to build out like an ios widget so that i just always have it visible on my home screen how many pieces of content each model has built out each day um however like I, I haven't quite figured that out yet, but there's an app called Scriptable that you can use to build custom uh, iOS widgets. I just haven't had time to to, to sit down and, and figure it out and go through their documentation. Um, but the other thing that I did build is if a model hasn't uploaded content per day or hasn't reached her daily uh, content um, targets, a message will be sent to the assigned account manager. I will also receive a notification as well. Within Integromat, you can do iOS notifications or Slack notifications or any other as well, actually text messages, whatever you prefer. So I just get a message saying this model hasn't done this today. Um, and again, it just makes the whole process of if you're going to be managing hundreds of, of models and thousands of social media accounts, uh, I really think it has to be built on top of systems um, such as this. So yeah. I hope that it was uh, that this was interesting and uh, and insightful. Uh, I'm going to add like a couple of more. Um, I've got a few other ideas of things and improvements I want to add onto this system, but I'm just going to publish this in um, version two of the course, so all of our active course members will get access to this. Um, dashboard as well and this dashboard can also like this for example is built on top of tiktok but it could very easily be translated across to any other social media platform it could be translated onto instagram very very easily uh, reddit as well was the other one i thought it'd be quite useful for you could track the correlation of upvotes and how that progresses over time compared to the number of clicks that you get over time, particularly if you're doing organic growth. I think that's very, very, uh, you could track some very, very interesting data points um, through Reddit as well. So I have also been thinking about translating this across onto um, other platforms as well to try to automate the entire um, in, entire marketing funnel essentially. But um, yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching. Any questions, please leave a comment.